Music was always in the family, and so learning an instrument was an obvious thing to do. It wasn't a special thing. Um, and from a very early age, conducting kind of interested me, which sounds a bit precocious, but um, I think I was more interested in music than in playing it. And uh, I used to get terribly nervous playing the piano. So that in a, in a destructive way, I get nervous conducting, but I think in a good way. So um, it feels the right way to make music for me. I love doing both opera and symphonies. They're completely different experiences. And uh, sometimes you wish you were in the other one uh, because there's advantages and disadvantages of both. But um, uh, what I love about opera is how long you spend together with the people you're, you're working with, two, three or four weeks, maybe even more. And so there's a great sense of um, shared responsibility in the, in the work itself. And with symphonies, it's just two or three days, and there's quite a lot of pressure in, in, in the wrong sense, in a way, to deliver very quickly good results. And that has a certain excitement about that as well, of course. But um, I certainly enjoy the group dynamic of, of opera very much. And I, I feel very lucky to be able to do both, because um, I think you need both. I write for the Gramophone magazine website, um, and I enjoy doing it a lot. Both my parents were writers, so writing is something I've always uh, enjoyed. I enjoy the, um, the fact that it's just me <laughs> uh, going directly to people who are reading it. As a musician, you're always speaking, as a conductor, you're always speaking through somebody else. And although that, of course, is very enriching your own thoughts, uh, they it's very easy sometimes to be misunderstood. So I enjoy the fact that I can uh, put my point across. Uh, I don't, the reason I do it is, is apart from enjoying it is because I think there's a lot of mystery about what conductors do, which is unnecessary. It's a very obvious job to me. And uh, everybody knows what the conductor looks like, and, but they don't quite know what the job is. And I never quite understand why they don't know. So. Um, it's, a, it's an opportunity to explain really what we do and, and, the, and that it's very, like any type of musician, it's clear, I think, in any type of leadership situation, it's clear. But um, that's kind of what I, why I do it, to, to try to make people understand what is easy about the job and what is difficult about the job. And um, Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a nice opportunity to talk to people. It's a very, uh, people don't talk to conductors very much and we don't talk to people very much. So it's a, a way to communicate. I think Tippett and Wagner are surprisingly similar. I think they both saw the world in, in a very big sense as, as to what it could be, in a very universal sense. Um, both pieces deal with the, the, the elements, with fire and earth and water and air, and um, both explore the s spirit behind those things from a human point of view. And I think both Tippett and Wagner are amazingly human composers. And you hear that music and it's so full, either Tippett or the Wagner, it's so full of joy, really, and love of love of the world in the in the biggest sense the sound world is of course very different because they are many years apart but uh, the 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 music behind the notes i think is very similar the tippet ritual dances from the opera and the midsummer marriage everything you need to know about this piece is in the title so it is an opera so it is it is full of singing, not with voices, but with instruments. Um, it takes place in midsummer, so it's full of the, the joy of nature. It's a marriage, so it's full of the love of, of, of people. And it's a dance, is of course, and, and they are slightly ritual, ritualized. Um, each one symbolizes a different season. 
and a different element um, in that season. Um, and uh, they are kind of disconnected from the story, so it's quite easy to enjoy listening to them without needing to know what the story is. The story is incredibly complex and um, complicated, to be honest, um, and some very strange ideas, but the music itself, especially in these dances, is incredibly direct. The um, excerpts we're doing from Wagner's Goethe Demerung are quite often done as, on their own. They're the most amazing music from the opera and they include all the best bits really, though the opera as a whole is over five hours and, and is wonderful. This 40-minute uh, precy is a, is a fantastic way of following the story, following the um, idea behind the story and listening to such amazing music. And it's wonderful to be able to see the orchestra as well as hear them because of course in the, normally in the opera they're un, under the stage and away and it, it's hard to do justice to the amazing music that Wagner writes for such a large orchestra.